Hey, what's up dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. Today's video, we're gonna take a look at this. This is a, what I believe to be probably a late 60s, maybe early 70s, but pro most likely late 60s, DeArmond Weeper, uh, model 1802. First time I've ever seen one of these. I, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even know DeArmond made uh, wah pedals. Uh, I knew that they had made volume pedals, uh, because I own one of those. This one seems to be an okay, like maybe fair, I would call fair cosmetic condition. It's got, you know, some banged up spots on it, but it's not, it's not totally destroyed. Uh, it does have the little labels here for instrument and amp uh, jacks. And it's, you know, pretty similar to what we usually see in a wah pedal. The pot looks like uh, it's mounted a bit crooked, so that might be something we look at. Switch seems to seems to click. Now sometimes these switches um, go. These switches do go bad uh, in a lot of things. In foot switches, wah pedals, that sort of thing. You'll find uh, a lot of times that these will go bad. And it also looks like. Maybe, you know, there's supposed to be something here um, that, I don't know, like probably a piece of uh, a piece of rubber or something is supposed to be glued up there in that spot, which will click this when you stomp down on it, but that's missing. Um, so I think first thing I want to do, we'll, we'll open it up first and see if it's got a battery. Because I'm sure it takes a 9 volt battery. Just like the crybabies and Vox walls and things like that. So we'll make sure it has a battery in it. And if it doesn't, we'll have to find. I think I might, I might have to find a battery. Or maybe we'll just use my uh, benched um, power supply momentarily. Because I'm not sure if I have a 9 volt on hand. I'll we'll have to go get some batteries. Whoop, whoop. Be careful there. Yes, it does appear to have a battery installed. So let me take actually take that off for a minute. All right. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to one of these, really. Uh, here's the inductor in here. Uh, this is 47H on the inductor. It has, uh, on the casing, it has a, a big S and an E, like an Eco, and then an S, and a 47H. I'm not sure who made that. But the first thing I, I naturally I want to do, we'll make sure that the battery, make sure this battery first has good, con it does not have good connection for one thing. Okay, so the battery is connected, but this side is so loose that it's not, it doesn't appear to be making good connection on this side. So first thing I want to do is uh, test this battery. When you're testing batteries, anything below the rated charge usually means that the battery is run down. So like if it's a nine volt battery, you expect to see something a little bit above nine volts. You don't expect to see it right at nine volts. If it's right at nine volts or less, um, the battery is kind of suspect at that point. But 9.6 volts, like we're seeing here, that usually points to a good battery. This was not making good contact. So I think what we want to do here, let's see if we can squeeze this together just a little bit and make it make better contact. And if we can't, if we can't get this to make better contact and stay put, we may have to um, may have to replace this. Hopefully we don't have to do that. I, I, I do have a couple on hand though. But there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with one of these. I mean, there's, ooh, the pot, the pot probably has a date code, so I could maybe, might be able to date it with a date code on the pot. Let's see. Okay, there's a 99197 code, and then below that there's an 8112. This might be from 1981 then. 
I wouldn't have thought that they would make any have made anything like this as late as 1981. But I'm no expert on DeArmond. Okay, so the battery is likely good. I'll tell you what, let's um, go ahead and plug the battery back in now that we know we're going to be getting better connection. Yeah, that's way better now. Uh, and make sure all of the wires are connected, actually, which they seem to be. And let's, let's run a signal to it and see if it switches on. It may have been something as simple as that. I mean, it's... It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, there are so many times I, I get things for repair that is just nothing but a, a very easy fix like that. Okay. All right. So here's the amp on. So we've got through signal. Okay, nothing there. Let's switch it. There we go. <laughs> I would say that's probably all it was, was that connection on that battery. <laughs> so, you know, this is one of those scenarios where, you know, I, I, this was such a fast repair. Uh, I'm loath to charge the person even my bench fee, honestly. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if I don't charge something, then it's just uh, it's just an invitation for, you know, abuse of my goodwill, <laughs> if, you know, for lack of a better word. However, uh, you know, I am definitely going to give this guy a break. I'm not going to charge him what I normally would charge somebody to fix something like this. But I just want to make sure that we do at least do some due diligence here and... Uh, you can hear I want to make sure that we don't have any anything that's loose you know to me everything everything looks pretty darn good actually the only thing I might have to do like I said it seemed like maybe Seemed like maybe that pot mount was slightly bent earlier, but I, I don't know. I'm second guessing that now. It, it does seem to be going fairly smoothly, so I don't see a problem there. Um, I think it was just a matter of this battery not getting good connection. I think that's all this was. So I guess we will just go ahead and uh, turn this into a, a demo <laughs> of this pedal. You know, since I've never seen one of these before anyway, we'll just see what this pedal sounds like through an amp. You know, this just goes to show not not every repair is a brain surgery. I mean, just start with fundamentals. You know, is it getting power? If not, test the battery. If the battery's good, why then is it not getting power? You know, just logically start um, at the source. And for you know anything electronic, the source is the is the power source. <laughs> It does appear to be getting some noise. Okay, listen to this. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. Okay, now the, the, the pedal's all the way down. Now watch this when I lift it up. There's a lot of noise right there. What? What's going on with that? You know what? I need to look back through my notes just to make sure that that wasn't the complaint. I could be wrong about what the complaint even was. Maybe the complaint was that it was noisy. But see what I mean? Listen to that. Right there, the noise completely disappears. 
And there it's got all kinds of noise. I wonder if it will still do it though, if I have something plugged in. Probably. I'll check that in just a minute, but I want to, uh, I definitely want to get back in here regardless and uh, probably clean these jacks. But yeah, there's definitely, now this, um, the pot is a sealed pot. There's no way to clean it because it's sealed. But this thing is noisy as hell. But that might just be the way that, that it is, it's going to be. You know, there may be no real fixing that. Um, but I did notice that there was one electrolytic capacitor in there. Um, and it's from at least, like I said, 1981 or, or earlier. So it might need to go. Yeah, that's just very noisy. So I went back over my correspondence with the owner of this, and he just said he couldn't get it to work. He got it off Reverb, tried to get it to work. They they said it did work, and it, he said it didn't work. So I think the noise might just be inherent in this thing, uh, and there might not be very much we could do about that. But um, I do know I want to do something about that switch because... It's clearly not switching, so I want to put a little bumper in here, and I want to give it some adhesive, too. I want to make sure it sticks well and stays. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's at least going to be able to switch <coughs> switch it now. I think while I have it, it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and replace that one electrolytic capacitor with a new one, just to be on the safe side. This is a 4.7 microfarad, 4.7 microfarad at two and a half volts, and it is polarized. Yeah, the rest of this stuff, I don't see any pr potential problems with any of this. These these caps generally, these won't go bad, and neither will these. Those are fine. And those That's a 200-volt cap anyway. That's not going to be, and it's probably not going to be the source of any of the noise that we're hearing. I think it's just a noisy, it's just going to be a slightly noisy circuit. It's just the way it is. But I am going to replace this. 4.7 microfarad. I wish it would, eh, I'm just going to tack it. I'm just going to tack it. And we've got negative side on this end, so. Clean the jack. Whoops. All right, I'll test it one more time just to make sure we're still good. Sometimes you get crackling like that too. The little bit of crackling that I'm hearing. Sometimes that crackling uh, can be the result of of a transistor that's going bad, but I think in this case it's just a, maybe it is just a noisy transistor. It really is. I mean, that that is a that's very noisy. This might be a simple case of, like I said, just a noisy circuit, and uh, there may be some 
online forums where people own these and are, you know, talking about that. And if that's the case, I'm not going to go screwing around with the circuit. I'm just not, you know. I probably could find a quieter transistor, maybe. But I don't know that it is the transistor. It might just be a... It might be this inductor that's making that noisy like that. What's interesting is it only seems to get that noisy at the very bottom of the range. It's not noisy at all. Like from here, from here down, it's just adding noise. And it looks like, honestly, it looks like they had a bumper here that was supposed to stop it at a certain point. And maybe that's what that's for. Maybe that's to stop it so that it doesn't get too low. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely it's 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 an interesting thought. Uh, I'm gonna ponder over that. But that noise is that's almost unbearable. That noise. What is this? This is a this is a one meg. Uh, one meg linear. So, I don't know. Uh, I think it might be worthwhile to maybe stop this thing from rocking back so far. I mean, it's because, like I said, I don't think it's even doing anything after a certain point. Hang on. Yeah, see, from here, that's as low as it gets right there and there's no noise. No noise. But from here down, it just adds noise. So I think, I think the thing to do here might be to uh, see if we can't fiddle, fiddle with the range on this pot. And I think the way to do that is gonna be to loosen this screw and try to move the pot. So, I want to get to the bottom of the range, which is right there, right? Yeah, but I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, how, do, how do I want to go about this? Okay, I think I need to loosen these and scoot this back so I can get this, so I can get these teeth off of here. Yeah, there's a little bracket, this little retainer bracket. It pushes this up against, um, up against this wheel. So I want to loosen these, scoot this back so I can scoot this back, and then we'll, we'll reset the range of motion. I believe that's the way I want to approach it. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's wide open. So that's gonna be it all the way at the top of the range, right there. So that's the top of the range. A 
Okay. Now, the bottom of the range is much closer to the bottom of this, but I want to turn, I want to change this bumper back here so that it doesn't go all the way open. So it doesn't get into just noise territory. Because beyond a certain point, like I said, it's not doing anything anyway. There we go. There we go. So we took that pin out. Now we should just be able to lift this up. All right. Okay. See, I see this it's this bumper right here. Um, we just need a bigger one. We need a bigger bumper for that. I might just do this. I'll put this underneath and start with this and we'll see where this gets us. Maybe that'll get us right where we need to be if we're lucky. Well, we almost got it. It's got just a, I mean, very small area at the bottom where it's got the noise now at the bottom of the range. But you can see what I did. I lifted this stopper way up so that it won't rock all the way back now. I can get it in there. I'm just gonna put a tiny drop of this. This might be easier said than done. Okay. Yeah, I've just put a drop right underneath where that bumper goes because I didn't I didn't add quite enough uh, height to that. I almost it was almost right but I think that right there is gonna get it now I think that's got it because now when we rock this thing all the way back and it touches back here it's not it's not noisy and it stops before before real I mean you can press hard really hard and get it to go to noise a little bit and it but it's it's gonna be uh just about perfect right there it goes to all the way to the top of its range at the other end yeah i think that's good right there man all right cool so i think he'll be happy with that hopefully uh, let's give it a little bit of a test i'm just curious to see what this thing sounds like okay actually before we get to the uh, demo portion of this i thought we might take a look at a schematic uh i looked online for one for this model and was unable to find one so i went ahead and drew this one uh as you can see here here's the input um this one uh the battery is con it gets its connection on the negative side with the uh sleeve connection of the input jack um so if you don't have anything plugged into the input, like a lot, most pedals, uh, the nine volt won't be on and going through the circuit. Um, here's the positive nine volt up here that feeds the transistors. These transistors are uh, NPNs or two N 4124s, this one and this one. Uh, the inductor is a 470 milli Henry uh, inductor. Uh, that's a 0 .47 Henry is the is what it said on the casing itself. And like I said, I looked online to see if I could find any that were like this, and I could not. I did find another example of this um, this wah that was being sold on Reverb, uh, and it had a different inductor, and it was laid out a little bit differently. Um, and they said, I think, set 1975 on the listing for it, so I don't know where they got that, probably off the pot. Uh, also, I did notice uh, when I was looking at that one there on Reverb that uh, the pot was the same as the one that I have in this one. So I presume that the they were using this style of pot, this brand, 
that are the sealed pots. And that's probably the original pot that's in this one. So it is probably a 1981 pedal. So if anybody's keeping score or trying to date their pedal, uh, that's probably the best way to do it is via the pot. Um, the pot itself, I have on the schematic here listed as 100K. Uh, they have a tap on the pot that I think, uh, it's a one meg pot actually that they have in the example that I have. However, uh, they have a tap on that pot on the back side of it that I think cuts it in half. And then the way they had the pedal set up uh, with the bumper, you couldn't get above about 200 or so K okay, uh, when you, as far as the range that they had it set to. And when I set it uh, to the point where it wasn't getting the noise like we saw in some, one of the previous clips, uh, it was exactly 100k, which is, and this is interesting because if you look up some other uh, popular wah pedals, the Crybaby, for instance, let's look at a Crybaby pedal. Uh, it's very, very similar. Uh, as you can see, it's the only differences really in any of the exam, uh, any of the values. Let's see. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll do this so we can kind of compare. So this one, as you can see. Uh, we've got an input, we've got the 9 volt uh, 68k to a 0.01. Here we have a, the input 68k to a 0.01. We have a 1.5k here. There's that 1.5k. 470k here, 470, 470 there. We got a 470 there. Uh, this is a 660 milli Henry inductor on the crybaby for this listing uh, whereas this one again is a 470 but probably i would guess anything within a certain range is going to be just fine this one has a 33k resistor right here in parallel with that inductor um, 33k here this one has a 100k and a 4.7 to ground right here and this one has a 82k and a 4.7 uh, I would say they probably used the 100K just because, you know, being de they probably had a lot of 100Ks laying around from other things that they also made and not very many 82Ks. So it was more practical for them to just go with 100K in that spot. You see, do see that sort of thing a lot of times. On this one, they have a question mark here on the value of the pot. Uh, maybe they ran into this sort of the same thing on when they were drawing the schematic, whoever drew this, maybe they ran into the same thing that I did, that this is a one meg pot, but the reading that I was getting um, was much less because they had a tap on the back of the pot. I think that was cut, again, that was cut in half. And uh, also the they had the range set where it wasn't even getting above maybe 150 or 200 K. And by the time I said it to take out that noise, uh, it was 100K exactly, um, so that's interesting. And it's interesting to me because most of the WAs that you see, here's a, another one. Uh, this is a Vox WA from the 80s. That one has a 100K pot in that position. So, you know, a few slight differences, but uh, pretty much this WA right here is almost identical to the one that we have, in, uh, with the exception of the transistor numbers. This one is a BC109B on the transistors, uh, but this one has a 500 milli Henry um, inductor, which is cl very close to what we have in this one, a 470. For all intents and purposes, that's 500 also. 33, uh, and they have 100K here in this spot, and they have 100K here in this spot. So, you know, 10K there, 10K here. There's a 1K feeding up here. Feeding the voltage in, 1K uh, on the collector, 22K on this one, 22K on this one. There's a 0.2 capacitor and a 0.2. Here we have a 0.2 and a 0.2. You know, so these are all very similar. Um, the Dunlop Crybaby has does have the addition of a couple of components um, that neither of these other ones have. And right here we'll see it. We have this one... Uh, it, on the positive side of the nine volt battery, we have a 1K resistor right here that basically is probably dropping voltage, would be my guess. Um, and then we have a diode, 
and a 0.0011 U microfarad capacitor. This is probably something to do with um, smoothing some noise in the uh, in in the power would be my guess, um, but I don't know. This would be probably dropping some voltage. But uh, as for what this is doing potentially, I'm not really quite sure unless it's just trying to filter out some RF interference or something that can get into the circuit on one of these. That is my best guess for what this is doing. If somebody has a better uh, explanation for this, uh, let me know because I'm not really sure. It looks kind of like a clipping circuit to me, but you know, for dial clipping, it'd be it's some that's something entirely different. Um, so my best guess is noise filtering on, on these components, but that they are not present on this one, and they're also not present on this Vox either. There's nothing there. So that is a difference between the Crybaby and uh, this DeArmond and the Vox, but most wah pedals that you see are gonna be very, very similar to this anyway, but this is the one that we have and the schematic for it. If you want to take a screenshot, and save it down if you have one of these. Uh, here's your schematic. Yeah. <laughs> 